taste some of Mama's zombie takeout, Adolf. What's up? Welcome to episode 333 of Zombie Takeout. Zombie Takeout. The Be Moving Cult Movie Podcast. I'm Uncle John. And I'm Scott O. And without any further ado, on to this week's movie, which is from 1987, Surf Nazis Must Die. Of course, that brings us to the impromptu plot summary, sponsored by the Wather P38, the very best there is, when you absolutely positively have to kill every single motherfucking Nazi on the beach, except those substitutes. And also sponsored by the Warriors. Can you copy it? Can you copy it? Can you copy it? All right, so we have a group of gangs, rival gangs. I guess you could also say it would be West Side Story too, but hmm. I think it would be, I think they were thinking more warriors. Oh, they were definitely uh, <laughs> nodding to the warriors with the different gangs. <laughs> <laughs> one for each type of dress <laughs> uh there may have even been like a world war ii thing in there too but hmm. the japanese gang should have been on the side of the german gang right? well they were originally were they yeah, all the gangs were teamed up originally until they all turned on the nazis well here's the deal they there was an earthquake in california the uh the gangs kind of have their own territories but the Nazis decide that they're going to take over the entire beach for themselves. Well, first they make but, an alliance with the other with the gangs, you know, let's ignore our colors and our turf and all that and work together. And that doesn't work out too well. Right. They they well, they slyly try to get everybody to work together so mm. they can of course get a bigger profit, but yeah. it's really a more self serving thing for them to take over consolidate power and take over the beach. Um, of course, the Nazi gang is, uh, you know, they have, well, you know, all sorts of Nazi names and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, uh, the one thing I was wondering, why wouldn't he go all the way? Just have the Hitler mustache. Yeah. That seemed like an odd omission. (laughs) It seemed very strange. Instead of like the gang leader, instead of looking like Hitler, looked a lot more like Errol Flynn (laughs) with a wetsuit Mm -hmm. than, uh, that. But they, you know, Adolf, Ava, Mengele, um, then they got the into Brutus. Brutus, which, why would you uh, take a, a a lieutenant in your gang called Brutus? Because, you know, he would just betray you. I don't end. think it was a Caesar reference as much as it was just brute. It just sounds, you know, sounds like brute. <laughs> Smeg, which I'm not sure why they would do that. Take mm. a name like that either. Just made me think of Red Dwarf. Right. Um, so, uh, they, also on the other side of town, there's this, uh, elderly woman who's, uh, making do in a nursing home. So she's entering into a new nursing home and, uh, she gets visited by her son, who's the, of course, the only thing in the world of hers, you know? And of course you could see what was coming her son was going to be killed by the Nazis and uh, leading her to a path of revenge. And uh, while the Nazis are, of course, consolidating their power. um, Should mention that the elderly woman and her son are both black. Yes. Yes. And uh, well, they, they eventually meet and hilarity ensues. Now there was a battle scene at the beginning of this movie. That must have been stock footage because it was way more expensive or seemed to be way more expensive than anything else in the movie. And when they're first talking about, you know, the earthquake and, you know, implying that some kind of big war happened afterward. Well, right, right. The only thing I remember from the early part of the movie that was just what I remember for most of this. Mm. Slow. <laughs> yeah, the pacing is kind of all over the place. There are these long surfing montages. It's a bit of a mess in that sense. And the actress who plays Mama, well, she's his mother, not his grandmother, for one thing. I think, did you did you say grandmother? Oh, really? Yeah, she's his mother. Um, 
even though he's in his 20s and she's supposed to be maybe in her 60s, even though she looks clearly like no older than maybe 30. <laughs> the well, actress. Yeah, I thought I just assumed it was his uh, mom. But yeah, she's granny. Well, she's That's elder, supposedly name. elderly. No, she's That's mama. The name I wanted, you know, Granny X Machina. <laughs> I think she's just mama. Can't taste mama's, you know, homemade cooking. Well, right. Out. That's where, where I got the impression from. But yeah, she she was Granny. Oh, she was. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, she referred to herself as mama, I think. And the two storylines kind of seem a little disconnected. Oh, or, totally. Until, totally disconnected. until he gets killed. <laughs> right. I knew what was coming, and I still couldn't see it coming. Well, I was just like, All right, they're going to shoehorn this together. Because, <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, you knew they were going to. Uh-huh. Now, Surf Nazis Must Die was criticized by reviewers as boring and hard to follow, and its acting, dialogue, and camera work were widely panned. Janet Maslin wrote, not even the actor's relatives will find this interesting. <laughs> and Roger Ebert stated that he walked out of the film after 30 minutes. Well, that's not Roger Ebert was a little prissy, but mm-hmm. I do agree that this was boring. <laughs> I don't agree that it was hard to follow. I think it was quite easy to follow. I wouldn't yeah. say boring so much as just badly paced. It gets very I, slow at points. I mean, twenty. I have my notes. Twenty minutes in, and we've seen two meetings and some surfing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, there was way too much surfing. Although the sur- surfing and sex montage with the avant-garde sax was quality Sh- weird. That was pretty weird, yeah. And I think there is the core of a good movie here. It just wasn't directed well. But it was the Warriors already. They already did it. Well, no, but it wasn't the Warriors storyline of trapped behind enemy, enemy lines and getting back home and all of that. True, true. It was just the weird-ass gangs that they took from the Warriors. The consolidation of power for the gangs for, for one territory, which... A little bit I mean, of that there's too. Only so much you're going to get into, mm-hmm. you know, the, the turf of a gang war. Yeah. But I mean, the Warriors is about the Warriors being stuck in enemy turf and getting back to their own turf. I That's think the, the bulk of the movie. The problem with this movie is they didn't give us a, a gang that we could root for. Right. You know, we, were, we were, weren't rooting for anyone until Mama came along. Right. And, and she was the only one that could get it done. I mm-hmm. mean,. There was the weird overacting guy with the beard. <laughs> it's just, do you think we're gonna do this now? No. <laughs> I mean, like what? Like wow. What? Is, what kind of movie does he think he's doing? <laughs> I liked Mangala. There was just something about his performance. It was just very mellow. He was the most interesting. Yeah. Um, second to Mama, mm-hmm. he was the most interesting in the whole movie. <laughs> It was just a, a really interesting performance. Um, I also liked how they juxtaposed Leroy the Sun's run-in with the Nazis and his implied death, because they never show it, with Mama oh, at right. you know seeing the body in his funeral. They clearly go out of their way to not show him being killed, even though they've shown plenty of people being killed at this point. Not really. There's a lot of off-scene, off-camera Seems like there were more. in this. I mean, you know, you see him like, you know, going down with the hook on a couple of different people mm. but you don't you don't actually see him him that's true there somebody. wasn't much gore for a trauma movie well yeah and that's kind of the, the first thing we were like wait what i mean it you have to go like an hour and 15 minutes into this if you're like oh yeah it's a trauma <laughs> movie <laughs> well, and this wasn't an in-house trauma film lloyd didn't direct this right it was directed by peter george uh produced by the institute i think they were called and Troma uh, distributed it. Like uh, Cannibal the Musical. The Trey and yeah. Mac made it and Troma distributed it. I mean, really, the other option is if you don't give us a gang to root for, mm-hmm. start out with the death of her grandson. You know? Yeah. Make this, you know, the rivalry. Mm-hmm. Spend about because five minutes establishing how bad they are in the, in the backstory and then kill the son. When she confronts him in the end... She's talking about as if she'd been tormenting them throughout yeah. the film. Right. And there's like two scenes, maybe <laughs> tops, yeah. of things that she's describing there. Like, yeah, yeah, you just did that with the grenades. What do you, like, what do you, what do you think this? I, I figured out it was you with the grenades because the grenades went off and here you are. It's not like she had been 
picking them off one by one, which would have been a better movie if she had just picked them off one at a time and then had a confrontation at the end with, you know, Hadoff and Ava. I did like the confrontation between um, Smeg, Gregory, and his mother. Yeah, uh, You know, she's acting like she's going to kick him out and then she's giving him money. And then he yeah. tries to sneak out to get a message to Adolf and she's at the side of his room with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> also got to call out the one great moment of the movie when Mama first you know, attacks them. The first one she attacks, she puts his head up against the wall and it's right in the mouth of the album cover for King, King Crimson's first album in the Court of the yeah. Crimson King. Because it, so it's this big, you know, garish face and the met with an open mouth. She puts his head right in the mouth. There was this kind of avant-garde music right after that during some surfing scenes. The instrumental section of 21st Century Schizoid Man would have fit there perfectly. Oh, of course. I mean, obviously they couldn't get the rights for it, but it just would have been beautiful there. The score is something I would complain about in this movie, too. I mean, they pretty much had two pieces of music that they played I mean, intermittently. Mm -hmm. One of them is a very suspicious ripoff of Space Oddity, just a a synthesized version Mm -hmm. of Space Oddity. Right. And then I think the other is kind of, oh, it's kind of, it's not Axel F exactly, but it's very much like your standard 80s stock keyboard soundtrack. And yeah. then there's this weird avant-garde kind of crimson-y stuff with sax and guitar. Yeah, I think that kind of stems from the Space Oddity knockoff. Possibly, yeah. It, it begins kind of, you know, mm. with the same beat and everything. And, and obviously and it, the director and obviously the director is a Crimson fan, so. Yeah. You know, he, he would want to throw something in there that sounded like that. But yeah, up until then, there wasn't really much that made me happy with this movie yeah. until and the way it just jarringly like she comes out of nowhere and just yanks him away mm. and then the camera just cuts to where she's slamming him into <laughs> and it, boom there crimson. is the cover of king crimson yeah but i mean there were just too many slow montages of the other gangs kind of turning against the nazis and also the harpoon used to kill brutus was hilariously slow <laughs> Because, you know, he holds the harpoon gun against Brutus's face because Brutus was injured by Mama. No, it wasn't Mama. It was the other gangs. They threw oh, acid, right, right. They threw right. acid in his face. So he was basically permanently injured. And Adolf just shoots him with a harpoon gun. But the harpoon goes in like an inch a second. It's like one of those Nerf dart guns. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's very obviously. Like a... <laughs> and the first grenade really took its time. <laughs> Because she throws it in at um, one of their beds. I think it was a hook guy. She throws it in to, at near his bed. And it's a good five seconds before he looks at it and it explodes. Didn't she take out a couple people in that? Like, you know, major gang members with the grenades? Like there was hook guy. And, and isn't that how Mengele got killed too in that? I think the gun was mostly just used on Adolf. Yeah. I mean, she shot a couple of times, didn't really hit anybody. The only one she killed him, killed with it was uh, Adolf. But the grenades, though, that, that took out, like, Mengele mm. and, uh, and the hook guy. Right. Which you'd expect those other two guys should have had much better death scenes than that. Okay, you know, getting rid of one with the grenade would have been cool. But getting rid of both was just... They, they wanted to end this film as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. Which is ridiculous because they had taken up too much time with, oh, so the biker gang is making uh-huh. money here and they're skimming right. money off the biker gang. I like, uh-huh. who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I like that they didn't waste any time on Adolf's surprise return at the end. You know, she thinks he's dead. She climbs back on the boat and, you know, attacks her. There was no wasting time on like a cat and mouse thing there. She just turns around and shoots him. Right. <laughs> it's like, okay, enough of this. We're done. That is how the movie ending felt. You know, yeah. they had like a good chase scene, and then it was just like we we've we're out of energy. This is stuck. <laughs> yeah, and then she rides off into the sunset on her uh, motorcycle, cackling, <laughs> which I love. On to sequels and remakes. On to sequels and remakes. I would absolutely love to see Lloyd remake this. Well, right. This this should be a proper trauma film mm-hmm. instead of what what this was, which <laughs> I don't know. I mean, some surfing montages, okay, right? Okay, you gotta establish the setting, but throwing them in every five minutes is not necessary. 
Well, they they teased kind of having a fight out on the surf, and I mean, it really was just a step above like a Gidget movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like, all right, okay. Did did we need that? <laughs> Underbrains. Underbrains. Loved the Crimson reference. Loved the the surfing and sex montage with the avant garde sac- sax. Overall, liked it. Beyond that, I'm gonna go three. And uh, I mean, it, it just was way too slow. Um, I, I it needed more fights. It. I mean, I I agree that the the weird <laughs> surfing sex montage with you know the jazz. Yeah. <laughs> but and, and it needed a better score, and just some better actors too, mm. and a gang to root for. Mm. So I'm going. I, I am giving it an extra brain for the King Crimson right. reference, so I'm going to. All right, and what have we learned? Surf Nazis! <laughs> Come out and play, yay! You actually had props this time, wow. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and I learned that Mangle is an asshole. Yeah. All right, so until next time, and we'll be reviewing Sharknado 5. We had to get that one in before the end of the summer. Oh, of course. And I will say, and this isn't a spoiler, but I, I will say that it is on, on par with 2 and 3. They came back strong. That That's amazing to hear. I don't know how they did that, but... Until then, go to zombietakeout.com. The URL is fixed now. Zombietakeout.com will lead to the site. I, I don't know how I fixed it, but I did. Where you find the episode description, of course, the episode itself, and the album art. Links to find us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and YouTube. Links to subscribe via RSS and iTunes. Please leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And, of course, if you enjoy the show, spread the word. Give us a little word of mouth. Of course, we appreciate all the listeners we have, but more would be better. You'll also find the movie list, every movie we've reviewed so far, and every movie we're going to review, up through the science fiction double feature, Forbidden Planet, and The Day the Earth Stood Still. Other way around. Yes, other way around. I have to think about the song every time. And, of course, the recommendations list. It's trauma. I was hopeful, but I got about 10 minutes in, and no. Ah, yeah. I was I was thinking, maybe it's going to get better. Maybe it'll, you know. Even if I was better. generous and gave it a four just because of the Nazi thing, you know, the Nazi deaths, I knew you weren't going there. Uh, it was just too damn slow. Yeah. Of course, you can email us on we take it at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 414-368-CTO1 or for the alphanumerically challenged. You can hang 10. 414-368-9861. Of course, always remember that you will always be calling from the middle of Milwaukee. And until next time, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there, there you, you are. are. Copy it. Take that last can. line again. Take that. What? Can you can, can, take? Can you copy it again? I was getting like a clicking sound from your headset. Oh, you have to take off the headset. I'll, I'll just take it from the beginning.